Hello again and welcome. My name is Kent Trammell and this is the third video in a series of tutorials covering the creation of a realistic portrait in Blender. In part three, I'm laying out UVs for my head mesh, baking out a displacement map, and painting a photo source color map. Like parts one and two, this is also a time lapse with commentary. Before any textures can be painted, UVs need to be laid out. Jump into edit mode and start selecting your seam edges. Then set them as seams by pressing Ctrl E mark seams. Commonly, I'll separate the ears, mouth cavity, and eyeball cavities into separate UV islands. Once your seams are set, Select all faces with A and then unwrap with U unwrap. In order to see where the UVs are stretched, create a new texture and check the UV test grid option. Blender's pelting algorithm is pretty efficient, though heads with these seams usually leave the nose and muzzle with less texel density compared to the rest of the head. This isn't ideal since this area will be the focus of our final image, so the UVs need to be tweaked to increase texel density in this area. The goal is to equalize the checker size across the entire head while minimizing stretching. Enlarging the nose UVs with proportional editing enabled will cause the checkers on the nose to shrink in the 3D view. However, the more you shrink, the more you'll see the checkers start to skew towards the nose and muzzle. So it ends up being a balancing act between texel density and UV stretching. I encourage you to take advantage of the recently added UV sculpt tools. They can be enabled in the UV menu and controlled in the UV properties panel. After scaling the nose muzzle and tweaking other UVs, I'll average the island scale and pack the islands from the UV menu. Then I'll reposition the islands to use as much space as possible. Again, the UV sculpt tools are great, um, especially when used in conjunction with uh, sculpting in the UV panel and also keeping your eye on the 3D view so you can see what you're stretching, uh, what, what your tools, tool strokes are actually doing in the 3D view. If you see an island that needs to be laid out again, but want to keep the rest of the islands as they are, click the button to the right of the pivot selector with the description, Keep UV and Edit Mode Mesh Selection in Sync. This will sync your selection in the UV editor with the 3D model, but note that it's not vice versa. This makes it easier for you to select UV islands, which, you can then, which then can be unwrapped independently from the other islands.
Admittedly, this UV layout is far from perfect. If this head were, were to be animated, I would spend much more time on the UV layout, but since this is for a still render and will be projecting the texture, stretching is not as big of an issue. After I'm satisfied with the layout though, I'll bake my high res detail to a displacement map. Create a new 4096 by 4096 texture. In the render settings, scroll to the bottom where the bake dropdown lives. Change the bake mode to displacement. Check bake from multi-res and optionally you can change the margin to 5. Then click bake. Blender's texture baking is both fantastic and pretty fast. Since we're using Blender and can render our raw sculpted detail precisely as it exists in the sculpt, we won't be using this map to displace our geometry, which is common if you're used to rendering ZBrush detail outside of ZBrush. Instead, we'll use it as an overlay for our color map, which will help blend the sculpt and color texture together. Be sure to save out the map externally before moving on. To start painting our color, create another blank texture with a 4K resolution. I'll be using KGOGO's B Projection plugin to paint my map, which is great even at its current work in progress state. You can find the add on here. The B Projection options can be found in the View Properties panel when Texture Paint Mode is enabled. Add a B Projection plane and select your source image. Adjust the projection plane to match the scale of your model. Note that you'll have to click Apply Image for the image to show up. I find it necessary to uncheck Normal in the Projection Paint settings in order to paint with B Project. Once your model and source image is adjusted, control right click where you want to source your clone brush, then start painting on the model from that same spot. I'll repeat this step for most of the painting process. Keep in mind that if you paint over the source image, Blender will lag for a little bit. I suggest try to avoid doing this. You'll see it happen to me a couple times. When laying down this initial layer of paint in the front view, I turn off Occlude and Cull in the Project Paint options. This will paint through the model regardless of whether or not geometry is occluding the surface, which is helpful for avoiding the nasty jagged edges you get in occluded areas when painting with the Project method. I'll do this from an orthographic side view as well, which will serve to mirror the side textures. However, don't forget to turn Occlude and Cull back on when cleaning up the texture or else you'll, uh, your corrective strokes will appear on the opposite side of the model, uh, which can be frustrating. You might be thinking that 4K is a little excessive uh, for a, a simple uh, bust, um, but I, I was told a common rule is to make your texture resolution double the size of your final image. So um, this final image in this tutorial series will be rendered at about 2K. Um, if you know your final image will be rendered at 1024, it's not a bad idea to paint your textures at 2048. Or if your machine doesn't complain about large textures, you can paint all your textures large and scale them to a smaller, more efficient size later. I'm using the latest version of the B-Project add-on, and um, note that I'm using 2.63 because it's not compatible with 2.62. Okay, so there's not too much to explain um, as I go throughout this uh, this B project method. Um, it's very simple. Um, click where you want to clone from, clone that to your model, and um, repeat the process as, as much as necessary. It's it's um, a very efficient, very quick workflow. Um, but for the next few minutes, I'm uh, not going to be saying much.
I'm going to go ahead and clone the hair texture um, to represent where hair will be grown. Um, I find that this is um, a pretty common practice for, for busts because it makes the transition um, from the skin to, to the hair um, much more believable rather than if you painted the whole head as a skin texture, um, as if he was bald. And then later when you grow actual uh, hair or particle hair in Blender, um, it, can, it can be hard to make that transition look natural. So uh, I'm going to leave the hair texture in the color map. And since we're not going to be seeing the back of the neck, um, this is a very quick um, patch job just to get the skin tone down. Um, if you were to see the back of the neck, it would require um, actual photo source images of the back of the neck, but um, that's unnecessary here. Keep in mind that for areas like the ear, nose interior, and mouth interior, it's not as important to source these from a photo, but more important to source the appropriate skin tone. If you want to take the time to find um, interior nostril pictures or interior ear pictures, um, feel free to take that time, but it's, it's not necessary in this situation. Um, so it's more important to just source the skin color and. Uh, and, and lightly paint that over your, uh, your ear and, and the nose interior um, because most of this color realistically will come from the shading, the subsurface um, effect. And uh, so therefore it's not necessary to, to paint the color texture um, absolutely correct to what a photo would be. So once you're finished cleaning all spots on the head, don't forget to save this map externally. Now thanks to B projection, what used to take me upwards of 4-6 to six hours on a good day, now takes a cool 40 minutes. And that's it for the color map. From this we'll derive our spec map, bump map, and various subsurface maps. Till next time, thanks for watching.